Welcome to the next tutorial about Fixit Networks, the new computer mod for Satisfactory. Today we are talking about some more advanced networking, so especially about the NIC or group system, and we will also talk about Lua properties, so you can read and write some member variables of Lua instances, and uh, we talk about a workaround about intercomputer communication, um, which will be soon be replaced by a proper networking system. So I got a small little setup here, so I got here uh, two indicator poles, which we work now for the grouping, uh, to show you the grouping. And we got here a simple computer. Ignore the GPU, we don't need it actually. So let's give each of those components a alias, a nick. So for example that one pole, let's call him pole 1. And let's call the other one pole 2. So they now have aliases, and we can now look up the name of that pole within the computer. So we just give it a name, and it will find that component. What you can also do is you can add a second nick to it by separating it by space. So now we got pole 2, for example. So now this pole has the nick pole 1 as well as the nick pole 2. And that nick only has pole 2. As you can see, those two have at the same time the same nick. That one has pole 2 and that one has pole 2. That one has additional pole 1, but it also has just pole 2. So if we search for pole 2, we get both of them. If we search for pole 1, we only get that one. Okay? Okay. So how can we do that? For that, the component API provides a function called find component. Find component takes a string and read a string, which is a nick query, and it returns then an array of strings, and those strings then contain the IDs of the components it has found in the network that match the nick query. So the nick query is basically again, like the normal nick, a list of nicknames separated by a space. What it now does, it, try, it uh, searches in the whole network for components that have the pole 1 nick and the pole 2 nick. There is only one right now, which is that guy here. What you can also do is you can just, ch uh, you can just search for 1, for example. So now it will search for components with the pole 1 nick. And we got two of them, which is that guy here and that guy here. Oh, wait, no. Uh, just that guy. Just that guy, because it searched for pole 1. But if we search, for example, pole 2, it will find that one, and it will find that one. It finds both. So that's why find component always returns an array of strings and not just a string. What you can also do uh, is the order doesn't matter. So it, uh, it just searches, has it this nick and this nick. The order doesn't matter. So if we do that, it still returns just that one because it has pole 1 and it has pole 2 as listed here. The order doesn't matter. So as said, it returns a list. So let's have a look if that's actually the case. We should take a query that returns us two different objects, so like that. And then we uh, just simply iterate over that list pretty quickly. So um, for, we don't need that information, uh, we don't need index, in pairs, com, do, come on, do print, C and and enter. There we go. Two nicks. Pole one. From, uh, we got the nick from that guy, and we got the uh, nick of that guy. And if we now search for pole one, we only get the nick of that guy. And if we search for po uh, pole one, pole two, we again just search it for that guy. If you, for example, now add a uh, third one which no one other has, so no, there is no component that matches that nick, we don't have anything in our list accordingly. What you can also do is you can provide simply nothing and it will return all of the components in the network. There you go, all of the components. Because everyone matches the, li uh, the query which doesn't require any nick. So that's how you can get basically the whole network, the IDs of all components in the network. Can, uh, it, this list it might be long if you have a very large network. 
We can now get the instances of those components with the component proxy function because, as said, we just have these uh, IDs right now in forms of strings. But we can also get the, inst uh, the instances. So, co equals component, component.proxy, c, and then we can take co. And where's my cursor? There's my cursor. You can see we now got the instances accordingly. That's, but, uh, but that's actually inconvenient because you would need to iterate over your list to then get for each of those strings uh, the instance. But component proxy takes basically a very big uh, amount of uh, dynamic amount of parameters, but each parameter needs to be a string or an uh, array of strings. And that means we can directly give component proxy the content uh, the array that is returned by find component and component proxy will then return for that parameter an array of Lua instances. So if we now for example go uh, iterate again over this list so co in component dot prox uh, no <laughs> in let's just take c in pairs zo do See, you can see we got again instances. If we reduce it now, L2, there you go. But you still got the instances because proxy returns then an array of instances. So the next thing we want to talk about are properties. Lua instances can have properties. They, we have two types of different properties. We have a read-write property and we have a read-only property. Um, so let's just give all of the members right now of our of a component. So let's make component dot proxy find component one. So by the way, it is for example inconvenient for you. It's not good if you basically take uh, get everything of the network and then to directly put it into component proxy because if you're a large network you will generate the Lua instance of every component in the network and if you have a large one that is a huge amount of them because each network port for example is a network component so I don't recommend you to do this as you can see in a large network always try to filter it beforehand or only then iterate it yourself and only pick the ones you want. Makes this uh, our whole stuff a little bit more convenient. So we take now pool 2 for example and we only take one in pairs com dot get members do and and then we just print that member name. Yeah, voila. So as you can see, we got here a lot of functions, but we also got ID and nick. Those are properties. If it, uh, as you can see, you can't differentiate if it is a function or a property right now. There isn't no way to do that right now. So you need to look at the documentation. There will be eventually something that allows you to check it in game later. But right now, there is no such a facility. What you can do is. Uh, so, okay, uh, ID and NIC only are pro uh, properties that exist if you have the instance of a network component. So, for example, um, if you have an, uh, if you have a mod, uh, if you have, for example, a uh, large control panel. The large control panel is a network component by itself, so it has the ID and NIC properties. But if you then get the instance of a module, like the button module, that one does not have a, uh, is not a network component, so it also doesn't have the ID and NIC properties. Okay? Okay. So the ID property is a read-only property, so that means you can only get the value, and the NIC is a read-write, so you can also write data to it. How can you access such a property? You don't use the double point operator since that is only for functions, but uh, those properties are basically like variables in the table, a table entry. So if we take uh, now our component and then we for example say id, we can print now that thing as set because we can read it. That is a string property and it will return as the string of that 
Nick uh, of that component. You can try to set it, but that won't get you anywhere. Because it says, nope, doesn't work. Eh, eh, I'm so sorry. So, uh, yeah, um, because ID is a read only property. What you can do, on the other hand, is you can take, for example, Nick. So you can again take the Nick. That one is again a string property. It doesn't matter, the, the type of property doesn't. Uh, so you can have any kind of data as a property there. Um, but right now you have mainly string properties. So component Nick. And you can see pull one, pull two. So if you take now, for example, the second entry in there, we just have pull two. Cool, right? Uh, what, you uh, what you can also do is, as said, Nick is a read write property, so you can also write data to it. Here it will work. So, hello. Nick, uh, if I execute that now, you will uh, it will change the Nick of pull one, pull two to hello. There you go. It's now hello. Can really check it so it's really hello and with that you can now if you now execute find component poll 2 it will find uh, it will don't uh, it will not find the component anymore okay okay the instance after that is still valid no worries it's just that find component won't be able to find it at the same nick anymore this nick also allows you right now to use a workaround to communicate between two PCs by simply taking, for example, a network poll, give it, uh, give it a nick like poll one, and then you can uh, simply get the instance of the poll one, and you can then use uh, attach to the nick. You can get the nick, attach then as some string to it. And the other computer can then read the nick of that poll and pull the data out of it. And with that, you uh, could have make uh, you could implement your own little stream to communicate between two PCs. If you want to make it bidirectional, you would need to place a second network poll. But uh, that's just a workaround. So um, there will be soon a proper networking system which allows you to make it make a way more easy communication between two computers. But that's it. Uh, but that's it for now. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. We talked about network, uh, about Lua properties, networking, uh, advanced networking with Nix, and about some minor workaround for intercomputer communication. Next up will be computer graphics, where we'll talk about how to render stuff to a screen, uh, how to use the GPU, and also about the user input, like key input events and mouse input events. I was Kodonul from Kodidi from Mr. Bytes and I say bye bye until next time and as always keep coding!